and it perfectly bounces off uh, the edges like there. The physics just works so well in this game. Some say that's awesome, but on the other side, it's a bit harder to control with realistic physics. Now there are two types of button in buttons in this game. For the one, you're gonna need your ball, and for the other one, just stomp on him with an old glover. Now there's a lot of secret controls in this game, what I would like to call, like, come on. Guess what? Glover can do a cartwheel. I can do a cartwheel. And how do we do it again? Yay! Double tap one button, like like double tap the directional button, and then C. Just that. I bet you no one knows about that because the game never. T I don't know if the game tells you, but it would make a difference because no one is reading the thing that Mr. Tip says. Oh, what a stupid name. Also, the water works perfect in this game. As um, if the water is too deep, you're gonna stand up on the ball and go around with reversed controls, which work perfectly. And then you get over there. Now, another thing. I think one of the shoulder buttons, I think it's L. If you press it, you can switch from on the ball and normal guiding the ball. Which is pretty helpful because every time you normally go out of water, most of the players do is just go over here, jump down, and then grab it again. But it doesn't work that well. Most of the time, it's pretty good. Y you're really gonna need that. Just to just switch back to normal guiding, and of course, there's no jump and run game without a stomping move. And that's a stomp switch, and the target which you're gonna have to hit to complete the level. Now there's two types of throwing. You got this like upwards throw. And you got like um, the, f the distance throw, or like the distance shot because not really throwing, it's like shoots it away like boom. If you're in the air, you can't like stop the time with your um, with your normal distance shot, but you can stop time like that with your um, upwards directional shot thing. But as you see, you can't do that with a normal shot because it's just going like boom. However, if you are on the ground, you can take your time and aim. That's another good thing about this. It shows you where the ball is gonna go. And I the thing is, I forgot how to stop. Oh yeah, there we go. Press C to stop. Another thing that the game, I don't think it ever told you, but important to know. Now, if you're good, you can hit this thing, still stay on, on the rising stairwell, but... Aw, didn't make it. It's easy to make it up there with only Glover. Just stand up there and then shoot at the ball, but you're gonna need the ball to get over there. And that's basically how every single level in this game is built. You get, you find the ball, and get to the exit. And then the consecutive level, you have the exact same ball from the uh, previous level and have to go through the level again. In the end, you go through the, b you get to the boss level, beat the boss, and then you can take the ball out into this outside world thing and turn it back into a crystal. That's only one part of the game explained. Because now there's the bonus system and collectibles. Hell, it couldn't make it jump around without that. Well, nothing in this jump and run is ordinary. I mean, you're a glove. And the goal is to get ball to the exit. Hell, hell I can bet you can't name a second jump and run game that's like that. Now, in the first world, find the ball is like the easiest thing in the world. Now, you can see. You got cards, like magic cards. And if you collect them, like you got this invisible counter, which if you collect them fa fast, you're gonna get more points. And the thing with the crystal thing is, the only 
the only thing you're gonna need the crystal for is getting more points. Because if you have a crystal, I always remember this is life here, you get the double amount of points. So if you go for the high scores, you wanna collect as much stuff as possible with your glove. I mean, with your crystal ball. Whoops. But then again, you have to be very careful because anything is gonna kill it. So I don't have it for too long. Now, the thing is you can also collect stuff with normal Glover, but then you only get like half of the points. So normal Glover half of the points with the ball, or any other ball, is like normal amount of points. And the crystal ball gives you double amount of points. But no matter which, what, what the amount of point counter is, you're still gonna have this um, invisible counter. Which like if you collect stuff fast, you're gonna get more points as you see. Oh crap. Now that's a lot of frustration in this game, so if you're frustrated pretty fast, I would recommend not play this game. And what is it again? Oh, there we go. Because when I first played this game, I got game overs like every second level. <laughs> because it gets so hard at the end. And there's like no space for any mistakes. That should be a bull somewhere around here. There he is. If you stomp near enemies, they get like stunned. And if you stomp on enemies, you can kill some enemies, but not all of them. And some destroyable enemies also drop these uh, cards, which you're gonna need. Now, in this first level, there are like 50 cards, but. It's not like there are always 50 cards, I mean in the next level there are 60 cards as far as I know. But don't always count on that. And that's a checkpoint, you have to get, you have to get, actually get the ball through the checkpoint. If you like only jump through with Glover, nothing's gonna happen. And now we've got this... Mr. Tip, I want them to talk to you. You see that pillar? Like even if you play it on the uh, N64, you can see that there are cards inside that pillar. That's also when I first played this game, made me realize there's stuff in there, so you're just gonna bounce against it. I think you're actually supposed to shoot something against it, but you're gonna have to shoot it like five times to actually make stuff happen. So you just yeah, bounce against it and then it drops. Boom, you can get in. No, I'm not gonna aim for any score because it's stupid. S getting scores like out since. Yeah, console console games. Since the NES c score is not fun anymore. Mm, whatever. Most of the time, it's a pretty good idea to just leave the ball behind. Not no time to do that. And go ahead, destroy some enemies, collect some stuff, so the path is safe. Because imagine if there was no water in here. Because in later games, they're like platform is like half the size as this one. Still enemies in between, but no floor. And they still have got these curvy edges. If the ball drops, you die. You have to go back to the latest checkpoint. That's what makes this game frustrating sometimes. Like, imagine if I died because of that. But that happens in the later game. Which means you have to be very careful. The ball is everything. You are nothing. Oh crap, that was close. You can also just go through over there and then just leave the wall from there, but I'm doing it the normal way. Most of the time it's a good idea to just not go ahead of yourself and try to do everything with the ball, but just do it in yourself. Who cares about score? Yeah, we got everything. And another life. Yeah, you can also you can really get to nine lives, and as you can see, I took damage from that. And there's the exit. You can only activate the exit if you have the ball. So if you just step into the exit, nothing's gonna happen. You need the ball. Now another thing is that I don't know. I think the game does tell you, but I never really use it. I don't think there's uh, really something that uses this mechanism. Now what you can do is if you uh, press down B, you can point at the ball. It's pretty handy to see where your ball is because in later levels they're pretty big and confusing and you might lose your ball. 
Yeah, that's actually very confusing. And if you point it and then press. Okay, that was the wrong button. I actually had to press two buttons at the same time there. It was the recording button. But if you point at it and then press R, boom, you can transform it from wherever you like. Doesn't always work, sometimes that little magic thing just flies off nowhere and doesn't hit. But most of the time it works. There we go, that's the first level completed. Now that level was very basic and easy. You shouldn't really die on this level. I'm forgetting, every time I accidentally hit the record button, some of my stereo mix goes off and I have to turn it on again. I'm pretty stupid.